Hi, I'm Dr. Shakti and let's do carbohydrate digestion today. So, when you talk about carbohydrates that we ingest, the most common carbohydrates that we ingest come in the form of either disaccharides or polysaccharides. So, disaccharides, the sucrose is what we get in a sugar, the table sugar that we have. Lactose is an important part in your milk that you ingest. Apart from that, polysaccharides, so especially the non-animal part, which is like starch. So these include the majority of the carbohydrates. Apart from that, the minor ones include amylose, uh, glycogen, alcohol, lactic acid, pyruvic acid, pectin, dextrin, and some other minor uh, carbohydrates which are then animals. Okay, so in the meat. Now, apart from this, there is also cellulose. Please remember that. Now, cellulose is something that we humans cannot digest. Okay, so keep this in mind. I've seen uh, options and questions come like this. So the most important ones are disaccharide and polysaccharide. Okay. Now, uh, you can take a look at this. This is a structure of an amylopectin. And you can take a look at this. This is amylose. So what you see here is, um, over here you can see alpha 1,4 bonds and over here you can see alpha 1,6 bonds. So this is straight, okay, so glucose is there and that is straight. Okay, so amylose is a polysaccharide containing uh, glucose with alpha 1,4 bonds, which is straight, no branching. But in amylopectin you see alpha 1,6 bonds, which has a branching. Okay, so now this amylose when it is digested. So for digestion, it starts off in your mouth in saliva. So because of the activity of the saliva, which has tialin. Okay, so that amylase acts. So what it does is this is broken down into different fragments. Okay, so it can be a two glucose molecule. Okay, so that is a maltose or it can be three maltriose okay or it can be oligomeres okay so glucose oligomeres maltriose maltose so this is what happens when amylose is digested by amylase you can see over here amylase acting on amylose as well as amylopectin so what will be the final degradation product so as we said amylose and the straight parts in amylopectin will all give out your uh, maltriose maltose and glucose oligomere as we had mentioned earlier now apart from that because of the one six linkage bonds over here this part will come out extra as alpha limit dextrins so this will be like three to nine glucose molecule uh, su containing substances okay so this is the final degradation product that eventually comes so, when starches are ingested, okay, uh, tialin X, which is in the saliva, and then later in the pancreas, pancreatic amylase. So, just remember that in the stomach, there is uh, no amylase that is uh, secreted from the stomach. But rather, what happens is this tialin, it continues the activity even in the stomach. Okay, so from the mouth, it starts, it continues the activity in the stomach, and then from the pancreas, the pancreatic amylase also acts. So, tialin constitutes around 20 to 40 percentage of the digestive activity of starch and 50 to 80 percentage of your pancreatic amylase. And by the time you finally reach the duodenum upper jejunum, the final products that will be there will be maltose and those 3 to 9 glucose polymers that we have seen earlier. Okay, so this is glucose polymer or maltriose and maltose. So these will be what will be finally there. So when you talk about uh, carbohydrate digestion, majority of the activity is already done by tialin and pancreatic amylase. So what is now remaining is all these things. Okay, and more so will be your disaccharides which are remaining.
that is when the next set of activity comes okay so also just remember that for the activation of these amylase you need chloride so chloride is essential for activity of salivary as well as pancreatic amylase okay so let's take a look at the disaccharides we already seen maltose then there's lactose there's sucrose these are the major things that we had earlier seen so the polymers polysaccharides become eventually maltose and the other disaccharides that were ingested were lactose and sucrose okay so maltose eventually when you keep breaking it down it just becomes glucose and glucose lactose if you break it down it becomes galactose and glucose sucrose if you break it down it gives fructose and glucose so this question even comes for biochemistry so earlier we had seen the effect of salivary and pancreatic amylase now finally maltose and the glucose polymers are there now maltase acts so this is what happens next in the intestine so whatever disaccharides or these glucose polymers which are there they should be digested so what happens is maltase acts okay along with something called alpha dextrinase so they will finally break this maltose and the polymers to glucose okay now lactose is broken down by lactase and that gives galactose as well as glucose sucrose is broken down by sucrase to fructose and glucose so there you have it that is the final products which need to be absorbed later so when you take a look of the digestive products ultimately 80 percentage will be glucose because maltose glucose lactose also partly glucose sucrose also glucose so 80 percentage will be glucose 10 percentage will be galactose and 10 percentage will be fructose okay so let's just take a look at the uh, same things that we had discussed earlier diagrammatically we have your maltose maltose and the glucose polymers that we had seen earlier so now this will be acted upon further by your amylase okay so uh, glucoamylase is just, just generally a more general term okay then we have your amylase and glucoamylase specifically the end glucose paths are removed separately and apart from your amylase or the maltase which is acting uh, we also have sucrase as well as isomaltase okay so they also act on maltose and maltose you'll have a better idea when you discuss this we have the limit distance okay you can see how the glucoamylase removes this glucose away from this so that is what the glucoamylase does now we have the alpha 1 6 linkage so for that specifically isomaltase is there okay now after that the straight chains are there so maltose this so over that you can uh, the activity of maltase comes your isomaltase also acts over here and of course your amylase then the glucoamylase and also sucrase as we had mentioned here so all these act on maltose as well okay so keep that in mind now let's just take a look at questions digestion of disaccharides occurred so this is rather simple digestion of disaccharides that is the final thing it should occur of the lot in the small intestine okay so that is where the enzyme needed for you know disaccharide cleavage happens okay now ion required to activate salivary amylase so that is also simple that is chloride carbohydrate degradation products in duodenum and upper jejunum so finally when it reaches duodenum upper jejunum we know that uh, the tialin and your pancreatic amylase are already acted and finally your maltose maltose limit action is what will be remaining so this is the answer okay and some people might get confused with uh, this okay so this is the final thing that you know finally is there and that is what absorbs uh, true about carbohydrate digestion cellulose in the diet cannot be digested that is true brush water hydrolases have disaccharides activity so that is also true disaccharides and polysaccharides include the majority of carbohydrate that is also true 
isomaltase acts only on limit extremes and not maltose. So uh, this is where we had talked about earlier. So this kind of acts on not only the limit extremes but also on the maltose that we had seen earlier. Okay. So that is it with carbohydrate digestion. Thank you.